this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a backboard or a kind of backdrop attached to your bottom cake board for your cakes that you can decorate. It's really a cool sort of thing um, to know how to do and to be able to add to your creations because you can do so much with decorating the backboard and add um, this, you know, a backdrop to your cake, which makes it even more cool. Okay, so in this particular cake project, I'm making a basketball themed cake and you want to print out how tall your final cake project is going to be so that you know that the backboard you're using is tall enough to, you know, cover the back of the cake entirely and that like part of the cake doesn't stick up above the board because that will kind of ruin your effect if you don't do that. Now, an one thing I want to mention here, I am using some pretty flimsy foam cord for this project. It's what I had on hand. Thomas the entire time was telling me, I don't like this foam cord. I don't think you should use it, but it's what I had on hand and I knew we could make it work. So I say that to let you know you can absolutely make this foam core work. And I'm going to show you how we do that using some nails and some brackets and some other little tricks. But I do want to mention this foam cord is, like I said, it's flimsy. I got it from Guildcraft Furniture. It's actually what I use for the boards of all my cakes and I love it for that. But for this project, I do recommend using a sturdier foam core board if you really want to make sure that you're, you know, you don't want to worry about there being any issues. So this is the Guildcraft foam core, the flimsy kind. It's got this kind of like thin paper over top of it and the foam core in the middle. This other kind I have next to it here is a much sturdier brand. Now that means it's much more expensive as well, but the foam core inside is like more condensed and come compacted and then the paper on top it's not just paper it's something much thicker so um, I do recommend getting that kind of foam core for a project like this but I am going to show you how the cheaper thinner foam core can absolutely work okay so you've got your two boards whatever size you want them to be just make sure that the edges of them line up with each other so that when you put them together it looks nice and neat and lined up I've rolled out some I have a fondant and modeling chocolate mix here but you could use straight fondant you could use straight modeling chocolate if you want but that might be a little difficult to work with as far as thumbprints and stuff um, but any any of those options will work okay I'm also using something because my boards are so big I and I happen to have this product it's called the mat it was big um, several years back and it's actually perfect for something like this you don't need to have this I'm just getting my fondant modeling chocolate mix here onto my board so I'm just kind of showing you an easy way to do that if you happen to have the mat um, the mat is basically two pieces of um, plastic food safe plastic that you sandwich your fondant between right so I've rolled it out a little bit already and then I put it between the two pieces and my two pieces have already been kind of seasoned with shortening I used to use the mat all the time I don't use it much anymore but for something like this it's very cool so and once you once you get shortening on it you don't need to do it again after that though you can see mine was slipping a little bit there because it hasn't been used in a while so it probably would have helped if I'd put a little bit of short on it but I didn't bother and it still worked so now I'm just rolling while it's in between the two sheets rolling with my PVC pipe roller that I use and getting it as big as it needs to be and I just use my board to you know check every once in a while to see if it's big enough and then I just sprayed a little bit of water onto my board that's all you need um, I don't know if I would use shortening uh, you could but I, I would stick with water, especially on the board that's going to be standing on the back, right? Just in case, I'd probably stick with water. Um, okay, and then you can see what I did there. I just put my board on top, flipped it over, and then I can just peel off that plastic sheet 
and use some powdered sugar and sh and roll over top of it again to make sure that I don't have any lines. Now the lines you do see, that's because I folded over. I don't know if you noticed, but I folded over the whole thing, um, the mat, while my fondant was in it, which was really dumb. There was no need to do that, but sometimes I do really dumb things. So uh, I recommend not doing that because you have to work a little harder to get that those lines out of it once you peel it off. Yeah, I'm an idiot sometimes. But anyway, that could totally be avoided. Um, but you just, you know, use your smoother and smooth out that side and you're good to go. Now, I'm also using my smoother, you can see, to kind of push down the edges um, so that they cover the edges of this board. I want all of the edges covered except for the bottom edge. So now, if this is going to be the board that's, you know, stands up straight, um, the backboard of the cake, then I want the bottom edge to not be covered. I'm going to leave that exposed, the foam core, the bottom edge, I'm going to leave the foam core exposed and you'll see. If this is the bottom cake board that's going to be attached to the backboard, then I'm going to leave the back edge uncovered with fondant and expose the foam core exposed, exposed, exposed. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay. If you don't know what I'm saying, you'll know what I'm saying in a minute. Okay. So you can see what I'm doing here to just kind of cover these edges. And now I'm just using a bench scraper. I of course recommend the cake heads bench scraper. <laughs> it's even taller than this one. We'll get the job done more quickly, but I had this one. Uh, very close to me. So I'm just kind of pushing it down and using it as like a knife. You could use a pizza cutter, you know, you could use whatever you want. This was just easy. And I am just gently pushing and cutting off that extra fun and then using my smoothers to smooth it all down. This is going to actually be my bottom board that the, my cake is going to sit on. So you can see in the back here, I'm actually cutting so that the foam core is exposed there. I have not covered the back of the board here with the fondant because this is going to be my bottom board. And then you're going to cover the other board that's going to be attached to this one, the back board, in the exact same way, only you're going to leave the bottom edge uncovered with fondant, that the bottom edge of the top, the back board, will be exposed. So there's the back edge of the bottom board that is exposed, and the back board you're going to leave the bottom edge of this board exposed, okay? It's actually not a huge deal if you don't. It's just better if you do. All right. When it comes time, so you can see my project here, I have the cake on the bottom board, and then I go to attach the top board. When it comes time to attach this board, we first used a set of nails. We used five nails for this, okay? We started with the one in the middle. And because it's foam core, and I'm using the flimsy foam core, this is Thomas, uh, my husband, for those of you who don't know. He is just pushing that in through the back into the bottom cake board, right? So you have to line up the nail to make sure it's going into the foam core underneath the fondant of the bottom cake board. And you can just push it in. Now, if you use higher quality foam core, you may need a hammer to hammer it in a little bit, okay? So here he is showing you the nail. It's just, you know, a typical nail, except it does have threads on it. Um, you know, small threads, what would you call them, thin threads? <laughs> I don't know, little threads? Um, but we used five of them spaced out, one on each end, if you look closely you can see, um, to put those in. But you'll notice it's not sturdy enough because this, the boards I'm using are a little bit too flimsy. So we only had one of these brackets on hand, yeah, we didn't think well enough ahead of time. Though still we're able to make it work, I'm just circling that other nail because I wanted you to see we had five nails in there um, and I don't think we showed that when we were putting the nails in, okay? We put super glue on this bracket. You want to use three brackets. If we had three, we would have used three, but we only had one, so we had to make do with one. Super glue it and then, like so, attach it to your part of it's attached to the backboard and part of it's now attached to the bottom board. Hold it there steady 
for at least 30 seconds and then do the same thing with two more brackets where I had those um, arrows on the board. So one on each side and one in the middle. Now, I only have one on the back. So what I also needed to do um, towards the end, there was a little bit of a gap. You can't see it well here, but there ended up being a gap as time went on between my two boards. I filled that in with a long, thin rope of the same colored fondant that I used. I just kind of made this long rope and, and shoved it in that gap and then used a smoothing tool to kind of smooth it in there. And that really helped keep things very stable. So just to recap, I used five nails, we used five nails and one bracket with some super glue. And then I had to make that thin roll of fondant to put in the crack there in the middle. But what I recommend is that you use two pieces of foam core that are not the flimsy kind, they're the higher end kind, that you use the five nails for a project this size, you may have to alter the amount of nails that you use, and three brackets, one in the middle of, back, of the back and then one on each end of the back. Just use some, some super glue, hold them in place for 30 seconds and um, everything should be fine for you. You probably won't even need to fill in the crack between the two boards if you do all of that, but I did and while I was nervous at first, we transported this cake ourselves um, and it was perfectly fine. So even if you went with flimsy foam core, you used the nails and you only used one bracket, you would still be fine. But it's always, to know, always good to know the good way, <laughs> better way to do things. So keep that in mind. Creating a backboard for any of your cake projects is really such a cool thing because imagine what you can do with them. You can have scenes, all kinds of different scenes, outdoor scenes, indoor scenes behind your cake that really add to your project. So it's definitely a cool thing to know how to do um, and fun to add to your project. So this is my full basketball cake project. It's a 2D to a 3D um, type of cake if you want to see how I made the full thing including modeling the hand and everything that goes with it and you're not a member a Cakeheads member already come on over and join the Cakeheads family we'd love to have you we have a lot of fun over there and learn so much every day thanks for watching see you later